Today, I'd like to tell you the story of a girl named Karina Chikirova. Karina lives in the city of Olekminsk in Yakutia, the largest republic in Russia. Its territory is larger than that of Argentina, but very sparsely populated with less than a million people in total. The climate here is diverse, but invariably harsh. The record low temperatures across the region are almost all under minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit. Winters last for up to 9 months, whereas summers are short and cold. Given these conditions, the story of this young girl seems fascinating. Join me as we explore the tale of Karina Chikirova. Karina was born in 2010 to a woman named Talina, who was 18 at the time. In 2014, when Karina went missing, she was three and a half years old and her mother was only 21. Many people, when commenting on the events, attributed them to the mother's young age, saying she was too inexperienced. However, we're not here to judge. Talina raised Karina on her own because the father wasn't around, and though he was in the village at the time of Karina's disappearance, even his name isn't mentioned anywhere. The only thing that's known about him is that he has another family. It was late July of 2014. Karina and her mother had gone to visit her grandma in the village of Alam. The settlement lies just over 40 miles away from Olekminsk and is tiny. As of 2010, it officially had only 13 inhabitants, 9 men, and 4 women. By 2019, the population had grown to 39 people, but the village is still only 10 houses in a sea of the taiga forest. The locals' main occupation is cattle breeding. By the time Karina and her mother arrived, her father, who had traveled from another village about 20 miles away, was already waiting for them. Talina soon went to help out with making hay for the cattle, and Karina was left with her father and grandmother. For most of the day, she played outside with her puppy named Kuri Chan, which means little guy in the Yakut language. At some point, Karina's grandmother went to have a lie down and fell asleep. In the evening, when Talina returned from haymaking, she and her mother searched inside and outside the house but couldn't find the girl. The father was also nowhere to be found. The mother and grandmother decided that the dad had taken Karina to visit his place because he had been planning that for a while, so they didn't become worried. However, they couldn't check if their assumption was true because there are no communications in the village and even cellular networks aren't available. Why didn't the father at least leave a note? Three days later, he returned to Alam alone. Alarmed, Talina started asking where their daughter was. He said he never took her with him. He had left when she was playing next to the house. Understanding that searching in the taiga on their own would be futile, the parents immediately went to the city where they informed the police, the rescue service, and the K-9 unit. According to the news, about 70 people arrived in Alam to search for the girl. It was getting dark, and night was descending onto the area, the third night of Karina's disappearance. Even for an adult, surviving in the taiga is challenging, and almost impossible for a child. The taiga is a coniferous forest on swampy soil, and copious wind-filled trees obstruct one's path through it. The weather here is harsh, with winter temperatures dropping down to minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit. In the summer, which is when Karina disappeared, it's warm during the day, around 75 degrees Fahrenheit. But at night, it goes down to around 50 degrees Fahrenheit, which can be very cold without proper clothes. And the cold is not the only thing that the person can encounter in the taiga. Among its inhabitants are wolves, foxes, deer, 
and most importantly, bears, who are omnivorous and present a serious threat. It's possible to find sustenance in the taiga, but it will mainly be berries, many of which are poisonous. What are the chances a three-year-old can tell the difference and survive in such harsh conditions? In spite all of this, no one lost hope of finding Karina, and the search continued the next day, and the day after, and the one after that. It's amazing that even after a week, people still had hope. They knew these parts and understood that finding someone in the taiga is like finding a needle in a haystack. Finally, on the sixth day of the search, something happened. A scrawny, wet puppet came running out of the forest towards the rescue team. Once he came up closer, it became clear that it was the same puppy that Karina had played with on the day of her disappearance. He had gone missing as well but no one had paid attention to that. His reappearance could mean two things, either he came looking for help, or he left Karina because she didn't need help anymore. The rescuers decided to have sniffer dogs trace the smell and follow them. Unfortunately, the dogs weren't trained to follow the scents of puppies, so the attempt failed. Two more days went by, on the 11th day since Karina went missing, rescuers noticed human tracks about three and a half miles away from the house. Their length was six inches, so they likely belonged to Karina. By the ninth day of the search, 12 days after the girl's disappearance, over 19 square miles of the taiga had been combed through and chances of finding Karina alive seemed pretty slim when a member of the search team was walking through a small clearing in the forest and noticed movement in the grass. He stopped and looked closer. Among the tall grass, he saw outstretched a child's arms. It was Karina, alive. The volunteer's name was Artom Borisov. He later said that he wouldn't have noticed her in the grass if she hadn't reached out to him herself. He ran up immediately and picked her up, calling other members of the search team. Karina was emaciated, light as a feather, recalled Artom, arms and legs covered in mosquito bites. She was wearing a t-shirt and stockings with no shoes on. When the rescuer handed her some biscuits and warm tea, Karina gripped the thermos and cried, and Artom also teared up. This moment was captured on film. See how the girl is lovingly covered with a jacket and how her rescuer is wiping away his tears. You can notice he has a ring on his finger, a married man Possibly he himself is a father and understands firsthand what it feels like to worry about your child. The sun shining on them makes the moment seem even more miraculous. Karina was taken to the hospital and placed in the ICU due to severe malnourishment. She was, however, out of danger now. When she started getting better, people began asking, how did she manage to survive? Karina said that the puppy, which had been with her the whole time, was of great help. At night, it kept her warm and warded off wild animals with its barking. For 12 days, she lived off berries, raspberries, lingonberries, wild strawberries, blueberries, losing a third of her weight. For the night, she looked for sheltered places and gathered grass for her bedding. Karina says that it was the dog that saved her. It's amazing that the dog didn't run away immediately, but stayed by Karina's side all those long days and nights. Perhaps when the puppy ran to the rescuers, he was hoping that Karina would follow him. Unfortunately, she had no strength left for that. The dog was later renamed Naida, which means self-sacrificing. The story of Karina Chikitova piqued the interest of reporters. A number of news stories about her were shown on TV, and journalist Victoria Gabasheva wrote a book about the girl. 
Victoria came to Alam, talked to Karina and her relatives, and became a friend of the family. After the book came out in June of 2016, she invited Karina and Talina to Yakutsk. Local artist Nikolai Kokchesov created a sculpture named The Girl and Her Dog, which now stands in the square before the airport of Yakutsk. Here's Karina herself next to it. Her story is truly astonishing. Very few adults could have survived more than a few days in her situation, whereas here, a small child survived for almost a fortnight. Now, let's have a look at several versions of events. The first one is rather whimsical and relies on the local mythology. Many Yakuts believed in Ichi, spirit masters of nature and different objects. They may live in the trees or in the swamp, but the taiga is always their domain. These forest spirits must be appeased, even if you're not planning on gathering berries or mushrooms, but are simply going for a walk. They are usually presented with fermented mare's milk, ribbons or jewelry. Some locals believe that the spirits may have scared Karina, but maybe it was the other way around and they actually helped her while she was in the taiga. Some internet users supposed that Karina may have been kidnapped, but that seems highly unlikely because there are very few people in the village and there is no one else around for miles except for deer and bears. The predominant version, of course, is that the girl got carried away when playing with her dog and lost her way in the woods. She had time to get away so far because no one had looked for her for the first three days. She survived because she didn't panic and managed to find berries and places to spend the night. And of course, the dog was of great help. Children usually respond to stress differently than adults do. They don't fully understand the danger of their situation, and therefore do not panic or waste energy on impractical behavior. Children tend to have a strong self-preservation instinct, which is not the case for many adults. Where is Karina now? It's been seven years since she went missing, and now she's 11 years old. In 2016, Albina Cherpanova, head of the local office of the Women's Rights Party, saw the book about Karina and the monument at the Yakutsk airport and decided to help the girl and her mother. They met while Karina and Talina were visiting the journalist Victoria in Yakutsk. Albina Cherpanova used her influence to help the girl and her mother start a new life. At first, Karina was sent to Children's Health Center. And then, they were offered the opportunity to start all over in Alakminsk instead of staying in Alam. And they took the offer. Today, Karina is a fifth grade student at the Yakut Choreography College. Local journalist interviewed the head of the college dormitory and she said that Karina is now rather forthcoming and sociable, though when she had only arrived, she was a bit scared and kept to herself. However, Karina doesn't like getting attention from people outside her social circle or being photographed with them. It seems that she just wants to live a normal life. But what happened to her that summer in the taiga will hardly ever be forgotten by her or her family. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. There'll be more fascinating stories like this one coming up.